This week, history has been made. For the very first time ever, the best large language model for function calling is an open source model that you can run locally. It's no longer a proprietary model like a GPT or Claude. Grok, an AI company that builds infrastructure to help you work with any local model, has recently developed their own version of Llama 3, which is specifically designed for function calling. And this thing is absolutely insane. It's crushing it on the benchmarks, beating every single AI model with function calling. And so today, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to use this model, and we're going to do some testing to really see if this thing is as good as the benchmarks say it is. All right, so here we have the blog post from Grok, where they unveiled these Llama 3 models that have specifically been designed for high performance for function calling. Now, the first big question that I had when I heard about this, because honestly, it seems too good to be true, is how can they actually say that their version of the Llama 3 model is the best at function calling? The way that they're benchmarking this is with the Berkeley Function Calling Leaderboard. And we'll dive into this in just a second here. But one thing that I wanted to call out really quickly from this article, first of all, their 70 billion parameter version of their Llama 3 is number one on this leaderboard right now, which is really cool. It's got a 90% accuracy. Um, I mean, that's the big deal right now. But one thing that I find even more interesting, honestly, is their 8 billion parameter version of their Llama 3 is only 1% worse for overall accuracy, this much smaller model, and is number three on the leaderboard. So it's beating out all GPT models and every single cloud model except 3.5 Sonnet with function calling right now. 3.5 Sonnet, as you can kind of guess from what I just said, is number two on the leaderboard. So we can actually go over and take a look at this Berkeley function calling leaderboard right now. This is not updated with Grox Llama 3s at this point, um, but we had 3.5 Sonnet in first before the updates and then GPT-4 and Claude 3 Opus, which is super cool. Now, just looking at this initially, it's a little vague, like what do these accuracies and rankings really mean? Um, if you want to though, you can read up on everything that goes into this leaderboard and how they do their benchmarking with function calling. Um, so just a little bit here, they are trying to be very representative of most users' use cases with function calling, and they call out things like agents and enterprise workflows. And so they're really trying to model their evaluations based on how people actually use large language models for function calling. And so I've spent some time diving into this and it really does seem accurate. But what we're going to do now is we're going to actually dive into using this new Grok Llama 3 model for function calling and see how accurate it actually is. And so we're going to use the AI personal assistant that I've been developing in my AI masterclass video. And we're going to use it with this Grok Llama 3 model to see how well it can help me with my task management. And so let's go ahead and dive into a comparison, first starting with GPT and then trying out with this new Llama 3 model. So in order to truly evaluate the effectiveness of this new Grok Llama 3 model for function calling, we need to compare it to another powerful model using the same AI agent. And so the model that I'm going with here is GPT-40. And the agent that I'm going with is this task management agent, like an AI personal assistant that I've been developing in my AI agents masterclass series here on my channel. And so this agent, it helps me manage my tasks in Asana, which is my favorite task management software. There's a UI for this as well with Streamlit, and it uses a lot of cool tools like LaneChain to build this up really, really nice and easily. And so if you're curious about any of those things, you can check out other videos on my channel or in the Masterclass series. But I'm just going to go over this code really quickly here, and then we'll dive into testing it out with GPT. Then I'll show you how to change it to use the Grok Llama 3 model, and we'll test it out there as well. And so really quickly here, the link to this code is in the description of the video in a GitHub repo, so you can check it out if you want. But I'm just going to go over this in a really high level right now. So first of all, we have a section that defines all the tools that we're giving the agent to interact with Asana on my behalf to manage projects and to manage tasks. And so here are all the tools. And then we get into the next section, which is the function to actually interact with our AI agent. And so I build up the chatbot and bind all the tools to it and then handle all of the prompting here and also handling any of the tool calling that comes up when the AI wants to invoke a tool as an agent. Next up, we have the main function, and this is just where we define everything with the Streamlit UI, so I can interact with my AI in the browser and have it manage tasks just through natural language that I spit at it uh, through the chat component. And so that is everything for this AI agent. Now let's go ahead and see how well it does with the GPT-4. All right, so here we are in the Streamlit UI for the task management AI agent that we have running with GPT right now. 
The way that I ran this script is I just ran the command streamlit run in the name of the Python script that I just showed you. You do that in a terminal and then it'll give you this UI in the browser for you to interact with your agent. And so what I'm going to do right now to test how good GPT is with function calling is I'm going to give it a very difficult task where it needs to invoke many different tools to interact with Asana to do something rather complex for me. And then we'll test the exact same thing with the Grok Llama 3 model. And so I'm going to start out with a very simple question. I'm going to say, give me the 10 steps to create an AI agent application. And so basically, I'm just having GPT start out by doing a little bit of research for me. So give me the top 10 steps to make an AI agent app. It's a little vague, but we're just doing this as an example. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, great. Now, create a project in Asana called, I'll just say like AI agent app and add each step as a task that is due by Friday. All right, so now we are kicking off many different things behind the scenes where GPT has to know to invoke the tool to create a project and then go into it and create tasks for every single step. So it has to also understand the due date that I gave and its previous response to be able to pick out each of those tasks and turn them into a nice little title for me for each task. And so it's going to take a little bit here because it has to invoke every single one of those tools. Um, but I'm specifically letting it go here and not just pausing and coming back when it's done because I want to show the speed here and also compare that to the Grok Llama 3 model. And so here we go. I've created a project in Asana called AI Agent App and I've added each of these tasks and it gives the links as well. So that worked flawlessly. That is awesome. And so now I'm going to do a couple of other little tests here and then we'll go and actually check it out in Asana. So first I'll say... Nice. I have finished um, defining the purpose and scope. I don't spell it right, but that's totally fine because I want it to mark this task as complete. All right. It has marked it as complete. Nice. And I'll say, I'll just do another test where I want it to delete a task. So I'll say, I actually don't want to test the application. I do not recommend this, but this is just a test here because I want to remove this task. Uh, there we go. It's removed it. All right, nice. And now I'm going to test adding another task. So I'll say, instead, I want to hire someone to test my app. So I wanted to add that as a task instead. Oh, nice. Okay. So before it even adds a task, it asks me for the due date, which is really good. So I'll say Saturday. All right. Add it in by Saturday. So now it's thinking, here we go. Yep, hire someone to test the app. Here we go. All right, so now let's go into Asana and actually check out and make sure that all these things worked as the bot told me it did. So here we go. Over to Asana, we've got a new project called AI Agent App. I click into this and then boom, here we go. We got a task for every single one of the steps to build an AI Agent App. Define the purpose and scope is complete. We don't see test the application anymore, and we do have a new task created that is due by Saturday to hire someone to test the app. And this is due in two Saturdays from now, which is also nice that it, that it determined that. So everything worked great. Now we're going to go over to the Grok Llama 3 model and see if it can do this just as well, or maybe even better or faster. So let's go ahead and dive into how we change the code to do that. All right, so I'm going to spend just a minute going over the changes that it takes to use the Grok Llama 3 model, and then we'll go ahead and test this one just like we did with GPT to see how it fares with function calling. And so the first thing is I'm going to import a new module from Langchain Grok where it's just chat Grok, and we'll use this to instantiate a Grok model for our chatbot instead of an OpenAI one. And then for our model that we have to find through the environment variables, we're going to have a default here of the Llama 3 Grok 70 billion parameter version. And so with that, all the tools are going to be exactly the same. So all this code is going to be very, very, very similar. The only difference here is instead of using a chat open AI object to instantiate the chat bot, we're going to use chat Grok, passing in that Grok Llama 3 70 billion parameter model. You could even test this with the 8 billion one as well, because that one is apparently number three on the benchmarks. And so that'd be cool to play with as well. And that is all the changes that you have to use. Using Langchain to work with Grok is so, so easy. They have documentation for how you can use Grok without Langchain, but this just makes it so simple. So with that, let's go ahead and test out this new Grok Llama 3 model. All right, so here we are in the Streamlit UI for the task management AI agent again, but this time powered by the Grok Llama 3 for function calling. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go through the exact same process as before. And right off the bat, you can see this thing is so freaking fast compared to GPT, which is 
so cool. It doesn't have the streaming effect, like the typewriter effect that GPT has, but I still appreciate the speed a ton. And so now with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a request to do all the things in Asana like we did in GPT. And so right off the bat, uh, it's asking us to confirm the exact date for Friday. Okay, so that's a little weird. And I think it's just because Llama 3 isn't as powerful as GPT. But I'll say uh, Friday is, and then I'll actually check my calendar really quickly here. Uh, Friday is the 26th. All right, so let's see if I can take this and run with it to add the due dates and add all these tasks into the new AI agent app project. So it's going to take a little bit. Because even though Grok is really fast, I think there's a little bit of rate limiting because I'm using the free tier. And so it'll make one task and then it'll prompt itself again to make the next task. And that starts to kind of rate limit itself. And so I'm going to come back when this is done. Oh, actually, never mind. There you go. All the tasks for AI agent app have been added successfully and are due by Friday. That is perfect. Okay, so it took a little bit to get it there. I had to give it a date when I didn't have to give that to GPT. But this is still pretty cool. The fact that a local model can do this, an open source model is freaking insane. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and give it another request. I'll say, I have finished, um, let's see, I'm gonna say, I have finished choosing a programming language and dev environment. So I want it to actually mark this task as complete. That is interesting. It seems there is an error updating the task. The task ID you provided is not valid. I'll say, no, you need to look up the task IDs. I don't want to have to give that to the model. It needs to be able to determine that itself just like GPT did. Um, okay, define the problem it has been updated successfully. Okay, I don't even know if that's the right one. So it's not doing the best here, but I'll I'll test it out a little bit more here. Create a new task to... Um, hire out a dev. Let's see if it can make a new task in this project to hire out a developer for me. Hopefully it can do this one fine. We'll see what happens. It's taking a sweet time here. Not really sure why. This one should be pretty quick. It seems like GPT is actually faster in invoking tools somehow. But here we go. The task hire developer has been created successfully. Uh, let's do one more test here where I will I'll, um, delete the task, test the AI model. I don't want this anymore. Let's see if it can get rid of it fine. And then I'll go over to Asana after this and verify that everything actually looks the way it should based on what Llama 3 told me in this conversation. So I'll just give it a little bit of time to delete that task and then we'll swap over to Asana. All right, so it has successfully deleted the task for me. And now let's go over to Asana and check this out. So I deleted the AI agent app project from GPT. Now this is the only one that was now created by Llama 3. So I'll click into this. We'll see how it looks. Okay, so hire developer has been added. All the other tasks are here. It has checked off to find the problem or task. And I don't see test the AI app anymore. So there we go. It successfully did everything that GPT did. It took a little bit more to get it there, but it did work. And so that is a huge victory for open source and local models. So I honestly can't say I'm 100% impressed with these Grok Llama 3 models for function calling because they're not quite as good as GPT. I think mostly just because GPT is able to handle a bunch of tokens a lot better. But still, it's insane how well this model is doing compared to other local and open source models. I didn't even want to compare it to a base Llama 3 or Microsoft 5, for example, because those fall apart so bad, it wouldn't even be a good demonstration. So that's why I compared it to GPT and it was almost as good, which is a huge victory for open source models. If you're an advocate for transparency in AI or making AI accessible for anybody, then this is what you wanna be rooting for. These models getting almost as good as proprietary ones is a big step forward. So I'm stoked with this. I hope that you can take this knowledge that I've given you and apply it to add local models as AI agents in your workflows. If you found this useful in any way, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next one.